Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, you guys, I just jumped off of Instagram Live probably not even 10 minutes ago, maybe 20 minutes ago, if that. But I want to jump on YouTube Live and chit chat with you really quick about the Esther Fast before things get to moving and grooving. And so I was like, let me jump on here. It's been a long day. Forgive me for feeling and looking so sleepy. It's been a long day today. I've literally had a very long day today. But thankfully, the day is coming to an end. But I wanted to jump on YouTube and kind of encourage you a little bit on finding your inner Esther, okay? And so I will say this. If you've ever, if you've not, if you've never been a part of my fast with my ministry, His Daughter's Closet, I really want to encourage you to look into that and consider that we are doing our Esther fast. Hopefully some of you've already signed up. Hopefully, hopefully. If not, don't worry, boo. You still have time to sign up and join that. Um, and also too, even if you feel like you don't really need to fast, you may want to fast. Um, um, and so the fasting guide drops tomorrow with all the details on what your fast kind of can consist of. But the Esther fast is kind of going to be any kind of fast you want. The Esther fast in the Bible is actually a dry fast, but because we have thousands of women doing it, we rarely ever promote the dry fast because of health reasons. Some are breastfeeding, some are on medication and all that. And so we always encourage a water, water fast or a partial fast, which is half of the day you fast and then the other half you kind of eat regularly or something. And then the next, like some people do a fast from 6 to 6, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And then for the evening they eat, but then they still do 6, 6, 6, 6. But also remember this, the fast is not so much like it's about the food. But if you put all your emphasis in the food, then you miss out on these spiritual benefits as in getting closer to God, spending time in your word, spending time in prayer, removing distractions um, and consecrating, which is setting, excuse me, which is setting yourself apart in that time with the Lord. And so I dropped that link right there. If anybody still would love to sign up for that, you are so welcome to sign up. And first off, while we're here, go ahead and drop it where you're from. I always ask that because I just love to see where you guys are from. So hi, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. Um, and the Esther fast technically starts on Monday, but you are welcome to start it. Even if you've seen this after the fact or even any of our other videos, girls actually do the Esther fast all year long. Okay. Ooh, Sherry, shout out to Ardmore, Oklahoma. You're not that far from me. So amen. But so some of you guys like, and shout out to Ariana in Florida. Um, but you guys are welcome to start that fast. We start Monday. Also tomorrow is your fast, your free fasting guide drops, which has, you know, questions to ask yourself, a kind of a run through of what the fast is, the nightly prayer sessions. You even have some some journal questions for you in that guide, as well as each day you get a video devotional from me um, and that's attached to your fasting guide. And so you kind of can each day have a word to go on your fast. Also, that starts Monday. And then every night of your fast, you have a we're having a Zoom call with different speakers that are going to come and pray for you and speak speak to you, pray over you. And then we're also going to have all of us together just kind of having community in the midst of our fast. And so those are every single night of February 5th through the 7th. And so I will say this, if you're inter like if you're so excited and you've been someone who needs community, this right here could be perfect for you. We have night one, Rebecca Watley, night two, Kay Nash, and then night three, I am speaking. And so we just are truly believing that God is going to allow us to experience higher and take us higher. But anyways, the reason I jumped on here was to drop that link, which I did up there. It's free. Sign up. Join us for the Esther Fast. That's why I jumped on here. But also I want to jump on here and share this with you guys because I think some of us can need to hear this. And maybe myself too. But I just shared it while ago and I heard it again. But um. Remember that God will take care of you. And I think um, sometimes life gets hard. And I don't mean like take care of you as in he's just going to hold your hand to the shower. Like there are things you know to go do. Like we know to take a shower. We know to brush our teeth. Right. But when I mean take care of you, like when you're working and submerging yourself into some stuff that you feel like God has called you to do. Remember that God will allow you to reap a harvest and he will take care of you. And I think that right there is something that I had to be reminded of in this season that I'm sometimes I've spent a lot, I've sacrificed a lot of time, a lot of hours, a lot of evenings, a lot of 
even relationships, let me be honest. I sacrificed it a lot for the ministry. And I remember feeling like, gosh, God, it's, I still feel like I don't, I'm not as far ahead in this area or this area in this area. And I think I just had to get to that reminding of God will never let you put a seed in the ground and it not bring a harvest. As long as you water that mug and you take care of it and have faith, then you're going to, you're going to reap a harvest. And I think I want to share that with you. Like no matter if it take took a while or whatever, when you have seed in the ground and you take care of that mug, it's going to reap a harvest. It, that's just, it just has to. Right. And so I just want to share that with you because sometimes we can be working in our, our gifts or our passions or been going towards something for a while. And it feels like it's so distant and so far off. And I just want to share with you, like, don't forget that God actually does take care of you. He does. And he won't let you sink, so to speak, as we say. Like if you've been sinking lately and maybe this is financially, maybe this is in your feelings or emotions, in your spirit. If you've been feeling like you're sinking and you just cannot get out of that place, I want to encourage you to try this fast. I do believe this. I believe fasting does not move God. It just moves us out of the way. And I also believe that what fasting does is it allows you to see the things and experience the things that maybe you have not allowed yourself or maybe situations have not allowed you. I share this often that Every time I fast, God gives me, and not just me, y'all have so many testimonies from girls every single year, so many breakthroughs. And um, I do believe that as long as you go on it, you don't have to do it perfect. I will tell you the fast that I felt like I just failed so bad on, sometimes I would have my biggest breakthroughs because my level, my understanding of failure in God is different. My understanding of failure was like, man, you didn't make it all seven days. Or you didn't make it all three days the way you're supposed to. But God is like, but all those days you did make it, you were truly surrendered to me. You truly gave me your heart. You wasn't doing it for nobody else. You wasn't doing it for views or to look holier than thou or anything like that. You truly gave me your heart. And then there were some fasts where I made it all the days, but I could I struggled getting into my study or I struggled getting into prayer. Right. So I want to encourage you on this fast, which you're going to get a lot in the devotion. I don't need to get too much ahead. The devotionals are going to break a lot of things down. You're going to get a video before your fast starts. Every day of your fast, you get videos and encouragement, scriptures, all that. So. So anyways, we're going we're going to leave that to next week. But I just wanted to come on here and invite you personally to join us on the Esther fast. But also, I wanted to encourage you if you are somebody who has been a part of my fast in the past and you want to go further and you want to go a little deeper, I want to tell you something. God whispered to me in the middle of January to create a devotional book to go with this fast. Now, most of the time I create a fasting guide and in the fasting guide, you click a button and you watch a video and that's how it always is. And that's free. Okay. That's free. Still free to this day. Free when you sign up, whatever. It's free. But the Lord told me to do a devotional kind of separate from the fasting guide and and I kind of was like, no, nah, like that's not how we do it. And, you know, sometimes we hold ourselves back because we're always do things the way it's always been done. So I've always just gave you a free guide. Here's some videos. And we just and we get one call in at the end of our fast. That's how I've always done it. But this year, the Lord really challenged me to switch it up. He's like, not just one call. We're going to have a call every single night. Not only just we're going to have a call every single night, we're going to have a lineup. We're going to have speakers. OK, not only are we going to have speakers, you're going to add a sister devotional with this fast. And that's called the um, Esther fast devotional or finding your inner Esther. So the Lord really has shook some things up with the fast this year. But I think what he was trying to show me is just because things have always been done a certain way does not mean that's how you need to keep doing it. The things that worked in the last season may not work in this season. And you got to be okay with that. And you've got to acknowledge that this ain't really working in this season. Maybe I need to do something a little different here. And the Lord was just like, you got to flow with me. And so I created a devotional called Finding Your Inner Esther. Um, and right now, today is the last day to pre-order that devotional. It actually goes with your fasting guide and it goes with your fast. So if you're going to be on the fast and let's say you watch the free devotional videos and you've got your free guide, but you want a little more, you want more scripture about Esther, you want more devotion um, and more Bible and more encouragement on finding your inner Esther, finding your inner courage, finding your inner purpose, 
finding that inner person that God has put inside of you. If that's something you're interested in, I want to encourage you to go ahead and click that link I just dropped because you are you are able to um excuse me, you are able to pre-order that today and it's only $5. Um, I put it for really, really cheap because I was just like, let's just do it super cheap. I've never done this before. I'm so used to just giving free devotion, a free devotional video. But now you're going to get a devotional book. And so you can pre-order that today and you will get it by Sunday before your fast starts. And you have days and days and days of devotional. So when you are in the midst of your fast and you're struggling a little bit or you just need some encouragement, you can just swap through that devotional, pick a day, pick a scripture focus on that and and continue to encourage yourself on it. One thing I really do believe, and this is something I do, no matter if I'm fast, when I'm fasting or not, I always am not just reading the Bible. I'm always reading something else because when I, I always believe that sometimes the biggest struggles you have is actually answered in a book somewhere. You just don't know it yet. Right. And I heard a pastor say that before. Um, and I remember being like, that's so true because sometimes I would be going through my hardest seasons and a book that I bought seasons ago would be the book that actually blessed me in that fast. So no matter what fast I do, I am always, every fast, I'm reading my Bible, but I'm also reading something else to encourage me during my fast. And I will say, I'll be going through some books during my fast. Um, and so if you are interested, I just dropped that link there. If you want a devotional that is going to help you find your inner Esther, find your inner courage, find your inner purpose on this fasting journey. Now, regardless, even if you don't buy the devotional, you're still going to get the free fasting guide and devotional videos. You're going to get those um, as well. So you still get a lot. But this year, I think I just felt like the Lord put that on my heart to add something additional. And honestly, it's kind of like this devotional is in a way God taking me back to my first love. I used to stay up and write devotionals all the time back in the day. I really did. And the Lord has really taken me take taken me back there. And like it's really just in it's really helped my spirit in a way too, especially with everything um that you know I've went through, my family's went through and stuff. It's been very helpful, actually. So I don't think that the devotional is just for y'all. It was for me too. It really was. Um, and so, anyways, I just want to share that with you. Today is the last day to pre-order that because we want to get everybody's pre-orders out of the way so we don't we can quit talking about it and so we can drop our fasting guide which drops tomorrow so make sure you're already signed up it dro- our, your free fasting guide drops tomorrow and then the next day is when your your Esther um dev- finding your inner Esther devotional drops and then Sunday is when the links start becoming live like your pre-fast links and all that and then every day like the day like a couple hours before the new day That's when the videos are live to watch. So whenever you have time of the day of your fast, you can just watch either day one, day two, day three, depending on what day you're on. But um, that drops all Monday and it all starts Monday. So I hope you are so excited um, because I will say this one thing about the Esther fast. And I talk about this in your fasting guide and in your fasting devotionals. But you always want to prepare for your fast. If you've been always nervous, like, man, I can never make it through a fast. I never have made it through a fast. If that's you, then most likely you did not prepare your mind, your spirit, or your life. I believe when you fast, there are some things you got to prepare. Um, because truly, if not, it's it's the biggest challenge ever. Um, and, and sometimes you won't get all that you could truly get out of it if you don't prepare. And so rarely ever do I wake up and say, oh, I'm fasting today. Or go to bed that night think I'm going to fast tomorrow. Rarely ever. If I feel the Lord put on me to fast, I usually give it five days to a week before because I know he's preparing me for that fast. Not only preparing me to receive what he has, preparing me for the purpose of that fast and preparing me to get through that fast. And he's preparing the soil of my heart as well as he's doing yours before you fast. He's preparing your spirit to receive what he's going to deliver to you and what he's going to try to give to you. And so I know I'm saying a lot here about fasting, but um, I dropped that link. If you're interested, you can pre-order my Finding Your Inner Esther devotional. And it's something that I'm literally was like, I didn't want to do, but I'm so glad I did because it actually blessed me. And and it's blessed me a lot, actually. So, So if you're somebody who wants to go deeper into the Bible and deeper into some scripture, especially around Esther, Um, Get that devotional book. Today is the last day to pre-order it. And I will say from what I've seen earlier, like some of them ladies, some of y'all ladies have really been 
I don't know how many orders of it we have had. I don't know, but I know we've had quite a bit. And there's no limit, so thankfully, but but still, we've had so many orders. And so even if you're one who's already purchased it, thank you so much. Um, it was just something that I did on the whim because I felt the Lord put it on my heart and I didn't want to do it, but I'm so glad I did it. And it drops this weekend. And so I know that the Finding Your Inner Esther devotional is going to bless so many of you. And it's already blessed me, so I already know it's going to bless you. And um, I will say this. If anybody on here has a question, um, please feel free to ask your question while I'm still sitting on here. I actually was uploading some videos to YouTube for our devotional, for our devotionals next week. And so I kind of was like, well, I guess I'll go ahead and jump on um you know, YouTube real quick, just live and, and chat with everybody. So I will say this, I'm inviting you once more. That link right there in the bottom link I just posted is for the Esther fast. So to sign up for the free Esther fast. So if you want to sign up, you can sign up for our free Esther fast. Okay. And if you are interested in my Devo devotional, I had to remember what I'm talking about. My devotional, Finding Your Inner Esther. Today is the last day to pre-order it. It drops this weekend and you will get it before your fast starts um, on Monday. But you can pre-order it at the link that is pinned to the top as well. But we are selling these things today. And I will say I got to give a shout out to somebody. I think someone just purchased or two people did. Yeah, I think since we've been on live, I don't know who these people are. Let me say their name. Bethany, shout out to Bethany. She just purchased the ebook or the, the devotional. Also, Ratara purchased the devotional. And so did Gwen. So thank you guys so much. I know it's going to help you go deeper into your scripture and help you find that inner purpose, that inner courage, and just really step finding your inner Esther. And we know in the book of Esther, she was an orphan girl that turned into a queen. Um and not by her own works alone, and not just by her beauty either. It was truly by a lot of favor from the Lord and a lot of, of inner strength. And so that right there is what I want to share and highlight in that devotional. That's what I am highlighting in that devotional. So you can click that link up there, but shout out to you guys that purchased that. I'm so appreciative. And I, oh, I missed somebody. I'm sorry. We also had, oh, wait, I think I said that one. Did I do that one? We had Quinn, Tara. Bethany, I think we had one more. Oh, John Tay. We had John Tay as well. So amen, ladies. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you are getting your devotionals. Amen. But like I said, if anyone has a question, you are free. Feel free right now to ask your questions. I am not too busy. I'm literally kind of my day is coming to an end. I was letting videos upload and I like to do that. The Esther Fast. Well, I will say this. The reason why I say... Well, let me answer the question first. Ask the question. Miss Melly said, how has the Esther fast impacted you compared to other fasts? The Esther fast was technically the second fast I ever did. Okay. Which is technically the first fast I ever did. But I didn't know it was the Esther fast yet because I didn't know the Bible like that yet. Um, but it really was the second fast I ever did in my life when I knew Whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, like something, something's different with fasting. Like fasting is crazy. The first time I ever did a fast, I didn't know the scripture of Esther. I didn't know the book of Esther, honestly. So I didn't ever even, I never even considered that a fast. But the Esther fast actually in the scriptures is a dry fast. But in the beginning, obviously, I, I didn't even know that. So I did a water fast. But my second fast is when I came across Esther. And she, I came across the book of Esther a couple a couple years into about a two year, a year and a half or two years in my walk. And I had already done one fast before, but when I came across this one, I was living with my boyfriend at the time was ex-boyfriend. I was living in his apartment and I was in school and I did not have, I had a scholarship that only covered my tuition and my fees, but my room and board was not covered, which was why I was living with my boyfriend. And so, and I had, you know, was newly, newly saved too. So I didn't have like conviction and I just was still living my personal life. And as I, as I started to grow on my faith though, I remember feeling like, so I, something's got to give, like, I got to get back to school. Like I need to get back on campus. Cause I don't want to live like this. You know, that was kind of what I was putting. I felt on my spirit 
So my boyfriend was actually going away on a trip for something for work. And he was going to be gone for three days. And I knew it was coming up, you know, I didn't. And just so Holy Spirit led me to the book of Esther and how she did three days of a fast. So as my boyfriend was getting ready to leave, I was preparing myself to go on this fast. I didn't know enough about it. Obviously, I just had come across it. And so he goes out of town and I start this fast. And it was a, I did three days of a water fast. And um, I read the book of Esther. And in those three days, I was working as a server at, on the border at the time. And I was in college. But in those three days, I was still having to go to work. And I could smell all the tortilla chips and everything. It was so tempting. But I remember I would go out in my car. And I'd be like, Lord, please help me get through this. Like, I know you have a breakthrough for me. I know you do. I want to tell you, I was living with my boyfriend for three days. Or for, for months now. This is almost a year I'd been living with him. And he was a great guy, though. I'm not not mad at him. It was just like I knew God had something better for me than to be living with him. And so for those three days, I just kept praying like, God, you're going to do something. Get through the three. I'm on day three, y'all. And that's why I say the Lord is so he is a buzzer beater God. But anyways, I am on day three of this water fast and I'm struggling my way through too. Like I'm struggling. I'm on day three. This is my last day. The boyfriend returns tomorrow, so to speak. And I'm in his office at the time and I'm chilling in there and I'm just hanging out and I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'm in school. Let me go check my email just to check my email. I check my email and I have an email from a professor named Dr. Coleman. Oh, Lord, don't let me cry. OK, I had an email from a professor named Dr. Coleman. He said, Hi, Miss James. I was a biology major. He's like our chemistry department. The chemistry department um, actually has some additional funds for students. And we are And someone in the biology department mentioned your name due to your GPA. And we have a scholarship for you. However, the scholarship only covers room and board. It does not cover tuition and fees. And if you reply to this email and contact us, we will reward you this scholarship. Dr. Coleman did not know that I had a scholarship for tuition. I just didn't have a scholarship for room and board. And that's what I needed. And so I remember I that was the first time I think I ever saw, like when they say, has God ever left you speechless? Like, did you, have you ever had a miracle? That was the first time I ever seen the power of God. And I fell on my floor in that room and I cried. I remember my boy, I remember I emailed them back. My boyfriend came back and I said, hey, I'm moving out. I got a scholarship that's covering my room and board. And I was like, you know, I love you. I obviously still want to be with you, but I'm moving out. And I want to tell you guys, I think in like two weeks, within two weeks, I was back on campus. I had a, so pretty much I had a full ride. I had a, a scholarship that covered tuition. They gave me the scholarship that covered room and board. I had a full ride scholarship for the remainder of my undergrad career. And it was an Esther fast that did it. And I've done Daniel fasts. I have done, I've done the all of them, trust me. But I have seen the most move of God when I've watered fast. Okay, I will say that. So I have done a Daniel fast. And me, a Daniel fast is still a blessing. It is. But I noticed in a Daniel fast, it's so sick. It's so long usually. And you're so focused on the food that you're not in consecration. And consecration is when the Holy Spirit actually communes with you and sets you apart. That's what consecration is. So I noticed a water fast, I get consecrated. I don't have like like when I'm sitting there chilling hungry, you don't eat you 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 eat the word, you know, like when you're in a water fast and you thirst and you struggling, you want to go go do like go to a movie. You don't go to the movies. You sitting in your, your the movie is the word for you, you know. So a water fast is a time of consecration for me, um, while a Daniel fast is still a blessing and I do them, but they're more for an extended period of time. Um, when I know I need a, a rejuvenation to my body, to my spirit, that's over time. But if I'm just like, but I will say a water fast, it's a mental heart thing. It it, 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 shake, it, shake, it shakes you. It shakes you. I ain't going to lie. It shakes you. It shakes you. That's just an understatement. So that was the first time I ever experienced that. Now, last year, we did our Esther fast. Um, we did one in August as well. And on the third day, I got a call from... Uh, it was called, it's Chalked on Nations. Um, what program was that that they called me? Career Development. 
they just called me on my third day of my fast. They were just wanting to update my file from undergrad or something because I was in this little like program outside of, you know, whatever. And when they asked me what I currently do, I told them I was in school for my master's, but I was taking a break because this year had been, I've been paying out of pocket. And um, the first year cost me over $20,000 out of pocket. And I was like, and it was really hard, I said. And so I just wanted, you know, I had to take a break. And, and, and so she was like, oh, well, hold on. So she looks into this old career development account and she's like, you actually have money in your, your, your old career development account. And as long as you cover whatever little bill you have, we'll pay for your master's program. And I shared that in my testimony last year in August. And I'm not lying, you guys. Like I had proof. I've, I've the, I put even the text messages and everything on the screen, even the call, everything during our fast in August. And so I will say I have watched God break some true things, some things like I always say if there was a if there's a mountain, like if it's like I can never get back into school or it's like I could never pay that bill or I could I could never heal that pain. That's what you bring to God in a fast. You bring that that thing that looks impossible, that thing that looks like it's a mountain because he he knocked that thing over and he's like he knocks it over in three days and you couldn't have knocked it over in a year by yourself, you know, and that's really beautiful. Like, it's so beautiful. And you might be like, what? why couldn't you knock it over in a year? Think about some of the stuff we battled with since we were young. Some of the stuff we've been carrying for 20 years and God knocks it over in a day. So like truly, like I just want to to tell you that like fasting is, it's cha it changed my life. I said, uh, I said this before, when I started my, when I got saved, I was just a normal saved girl for the first year, I think. The first year and a half actually. It wasn't until I started fasting, that's when things went different for me. I was just saved, girl. Like, you know, I was going to church sometimes. I was sleeping with my boyfriend. I was, you know, living. Like, I, I was still kind of in the lukewarm stage. You know what I mean? Like, I was still there and still not. But it was fasting that that really changed my life because I started to get a more intimate relationship with God. And I started to experience God. And the power of God. That's why I always say somebody could come up with some new details like, oh, we got proof. God is not real. Jesus was not real. But there are some like like people could come up with that tomorrow or any day. But when you have had a true experience with God, there are things no one could ever tell me that I know was not God. Like Someone could tell me like, we could argue all day. I'm like, you don't know the experiences. Like, I know that God is real. OK, like the Lord have mercy. I know I have so many experiences where. I, I, I share this into one of the devotionals, but I feel like I want to share this right now. There was one time where I had to pay my rent and I was doing ministry full time and we just had some hard months, like some months where our, our finances went really low. And I remember I needed to pay my rent and I wasn't paying myself. I was paying other people that we hired. So I was like, I'm not going to pay myself these months. Like I'm only going to pay them. And then here it goes. It's time to pay my rent. And I have literally nothing pretty much. And all that week, I kept like working, trying to work, trying to like, gosh, God, I don't, I, I ain't gonna be able to pay my rent. I ain't gonna be able to pay my rent. We get to the last day of that week, the day now, like I knew the rent was coming all week, and now the rent is due. The day the rent is due, I'm right. I get up, and I'm like, and I know, like, I don't have, I don't have what I need. I have a small portion. I don't have the whole thing. Like, I don't, I don't have my rent. I woke up that morning, and I felt heavy, like. Man, I don't have my rent. And the Lord said, get up and go do what I called you to do. So you know what I did that day? I got up. I put on a blazer. I put on my makeup. I got myself together. I went to my, my office at the time. I wrote my devotionals. I preached my messages. I did everything God called me to do. And I will tell you, by the end of that day, I had my rent. Not because I went and got a loan or not because I asked somebody to borrow the money. I had my rent, though, at the end of that day. And I was like, wow, God, I think you just needed me to know, like, not to lose faith even up to the last minute. Because I could have just stayed home that day and, and sulked in the, the thought of not having my rent money. But instead, I got up and I just tried to do what you called me to do. That has happened plenty, plenty, plenty times in, in my life, especially doing ministry. OK, like 
um, there were seasons when I thought I needed to pay an intern and we just didn't have the money. And I remember she was supposed to come pick up her check on a Friday at 12 o'clock. And I remember all week long, I'm, I'm trying to get this money. I, I'm trying to come like make sales and I'm trying to like see where the ministry has extra money here or like how can I get this extra money because this intern worked so well for us all summer. And this is her stipend. She deserves that. And I remember I like the day before she was supposed to get this her check. I just didn't have the money for her. And and I used the money that was supposed to be for her to keep the lights on at the office and to do that. Like I remember feeling like, God, I thought I did the right thing, but like I know she worked all summer for us. Like she deserves her stipend. And that was on a Thursday when I, I had to cry out to the Lord. Mm, that's why scripture, that's why Isaiah 58 be saying cry aloud to the Lord. But anyways, I was I cried out to the Lord. And I said, Lord, I don't need nothing. But we we gave her our word. And you're behind this. Like, like I don't want people thinking I'm out here stealing folks stuff. Like I'm not grimy. And I'm I cried out to the Lord. And I went home that day and I felt so defeated. And um, the next day I get up and I come into my office and I said, you know what, Lord? She's going to come pick her check up at 12. So at 1130, I'm going to run to the bank and whatever we have, I'm going to just get it all out. Like it might, it's not enough. It's not going to cover her, 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 her thing, but I'm going to just give her all we have. And I'm going to let her know that we will pay her the rest as soon as possible. And I remember I felt so defeated and so almost 11.30 comes and I'm, and something happens. Something happens with her schedule. I get called into a meeting or something. And so we're like, hey, can you, I was like, hey, can you come pick your check up at two? Because I don't have time to go to the bank right now because whatever, whatever. She's like, okay. So I get out of my meeting at 1.30. I get out of my meeting and I'm like, oh, I need to, I need to go to the bank. I was like, well, before I go to the bank, let me check our account real quick just to make sure what I, the exact amount I can get out. <laughs> I check our account. All her money is there. All the money that we were supposed to pay that girl at two o'clock by 1.30, all her money is there. We we're supposed to pay her at 12, but something happened where we pushed it back because we were she got busy, but also I was in some meetings. So I grab my keys, my our bank card, I run to the bank, I get her a check for the full amount of her internship stipend. I get back in here. I'm currently printing out her certificate at the time and she's walking up and it's like 150. And I have her full amount and I have her certificate. And she would have she she doesn't know that story. All she knows is, oh, I've served all summer and here you go. They paid me my stipend. But in the background, the Lord was testing my faith so much, man. Oh, my gosh. But you know what? We paid that girl. We gave her her stipend. And I remember that day driving, like leaving the office, just thanking the Lord because I was like, I just knew we were not going to be able to fulfill our word. And that hurt me because I feel like that makes God look bad. But God says, if my name is on it, I'm going to take care of it. If his name is on you, girl, he is going to take care of you. So I want to tell you that there's been so many times I've watched God come through for my ministry, for me, from other girls, like even the intern, you know, like like in a way God came through for her. She wouldn't have had her full stipend. You know what I mean? And so I just want to share this with you. Like, and this is what I will say was so crazy all that week. I kept trying to sell all kinds of products. I was trying to do the most like I was trying to figure out what could we put on sale? God, do we need to do like I was Nobody, no money was coming through that whole week. When I got in that meeting at 11, before 1130, there was no, no money was coming through. But we still had the same amount and we did not have enough to pay her. So from 1130 to 130, God allowed women, some randomly, to just start buying our devotional books, our books. Somebody bought like some of our courses. Like, I don't know where God, God just brought women all over the place, just started buying some of our products. Because by the time I got out of that meeting and looked at that account, the girl had enough. We had enough to pay her. So I just want to tell you that like, when you relax and you chill and you just trust, because I had to go to meetings, I had to still get up and shake, even though I know I did not have the money to pay that girl, I still had to, God was like, still get up and go. Like, you still got to get up and go to your meetings. You still got to get up and write what I told you. You still got to get up and preach what I told you to preach. Like, it don't stop because you ran out of money. 
you got to keep going. And I had to learn that. And I think that's what he taught me. Like, just because you had a low month or a low week or you had to, you know, you didn't know how you was going to pay her. Things don't stop because you have a low week. You got to just keep going. You got to keep hitting that wall, daughter. And so that's what I want to share with you today. Like, God is saying, like, you don't need nothing, daughter. He's got you. He's got you. And and I've, I've had to be reminded over and over and over again. Yes, yeah, someone said it. Stay the course. I've had to be reminded so many times. Like, I still today, like, if we got something going on, I'm like, oh, God, how are we going to take care of this? And then I have to stop and be like, how many times does this man got to show you that he going to take care of it all? But I'd be like, oh, God, I'm scared. Like, how are we going to take care of this? How are we going to do this? You know, I really begin scared. So, um, but I just want to share that with you guys because there truly is so much, so much personally that you go through being in ministry that you won't really ever share. But, but in a way, you see so much of God, but also you get your faith t tested so many times. And so I just wanted to share those little stories with you. I felt like that's something like I wanted to share. And Monica said, can a fast break strongholds? Definitely. That's actually what it's meant to do. Um, I don't have it. My, I don't have my Bible in front of me. It's in my office. But um, there's a scripture. I think it's in Isaiah. Is that Isaiah, Lord? Mm. I think it's in Isaiah, but it talks about what a fast is meant it's to break strongholds. Is it Isaiah 58 or Isaiah 54? It's somewhere, girl. Let me. I'm going to get it for you because I know what I'm thinking. I see it. I just got to say it. Is not this the, okay, Isaiah 58, 6. Is not this the fast I choose to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and break every yoke? Remember, yoke is the thing that they would put on oxen and stuff like over their neck. So, yes, girl, it can break strong clothes. Isaiah 58, 6. Read it. Because, yeah, it can. It can break a lot of stuff. Mm. Amen. Amen. Well, ladies, thank you so much for joining me for this live. I didn't know where the Lord was going to take all this, but I am so, so excited for the Esther fast. I shared it on my Instagram today. I was editing one of the Esther fast things and I just started shouting. Like I just got, I, I like when the Lord moves, he moves, but I just started like clapping, shouting y'all. I was wilding in here because like I, I see, I could see him. I could see the move of God. I was like, oh God, thank you, Jesus. Like, you're, all I am is just, just in the way. Let me get out the way, let you do what you need to do. I'm just the one who said, hey, y'all. And y'all started to come. And now the Lord's like, all right, move, Morgan. Let me do what I came to do. So I'm like, all right, Lord, I got you. But I'm so glad that um, I got to come on here and join you guys for a little bit before the Esther Fest. The Esther Fest starts Monday. We do not have a video going out tomorrow for Fearless Friday because you got three videos coming out next week. Well, kind of like four or five, actually, but coming out next week back to back. And so I pray that your weekend is strong. Tomorrow, your Esther Fast guide drops. It's free. That fasting guide drops tomorrow. Make sure you're signed up. There's a link pinned, I believe, at the top. Hopefully, you can go ahead and sign up if you haven't already. It's going to bless you. It is F-R-E-E, -E, okay? It's free to join. Even our, our nightly Zoom calls with Kay Nash and Rebecca Watley, as we pray over you and everything, those are free as well. So just come as you are, girl. Come and just bring a notebook, bring a drink, bring your cup, like get ready, grab your notebook, and, and come with a heart ready to expect God to show up because I know he will. And also, too, I will tell you, with our fasting guide that we dropped, there also is a Esther fast devotional called Finding Your Inner Esther. That's what I was talking about in the beginning. So today is the last day to pre-order that. If you want something to go along with your fast, like something to read that's more scripture, you can click that link right there. And you can go ahead and pre-order it, and it'll be sent to you before your fast starts and um, via your email or a digital file so you can have that. And either way, y'all, like I'm just I'm so excited to be able to pour into you. And I will say the word the Lord gave me in the ministry for this year was higher. And I want to tell you, I have been watching God already do that. And that is so crazy. Like it, it's so wild to already see him doing little things. But the only way you go higher is you first got to get out of your comfort zone. You got to get out of what you always done. So if you've always never chose to fast, if you've always been doing things the way you've been doing them, 
then girl, it's time to switch it up, okay? And come along with us on this journey as we switch it up and we watch God do something amazing. And so I want to encourage you to click that link right there if you want that devotional. Today is the last day to uh, get it. And I already called out some names like, oh, shout out. I think Gwen was the last person that purchased it a while ago. And I think we've had a couple more actually since I've been on here. I think we've had about five more of you who purchased your devotional book. And let me keep, I'm going to start saying y'all's name. So, so forgive me if um, I, I get them a wrong or right. Okay. Like I might, I might mess up a little bit, but let's see. Let's see how many, because I know Gwen was the last one we had. Okay. Gwen, she got hers. Oops. Let's come here. Let me have to see. So shout out to you guys. That link is right there. Shout out to Gwen. Also shout out to Taylor. Thank you, Taylor, for grabbing your guide. Also shout out to Aki. Thank you for grabbing it. And Francis, you got your guide just in time. Last day, Karen, you got yours as well. And so did Eileen. Eileen, thank you so much. She did hers. And so also did Jessalyn got hers as well. So shout out to you ladies for getting y'all's like while we're sitting here on live, y'all were moving and grooving. So shout out to y'all. I appreciate you guys so much for purchasing that. And honestly, this is something I never do. I always just do the fasting God and that's it. But I can see trusting the Lord, like just doing something out of my comfort zone Um it really blessed has, has blessed me and it, y'all are blessing me right now. Like, so I really appreciate that. Um, and so, yeah, you guys, I'm so excited for the Esther fast. So I think this is going to be my last video before the Esther fast starts. And y'all got a video coming, I think on Sunday, kind of like your pre fast video, things to get prepared for. So I am so excited to see God move on the behalf of each and every one of you. And, um, Make sure you zoom, zoom, zoom. Make sure you join that Zoom call. I think it's 500 seats, and so hopefully you're one of the 500 that get to get on the Zooms every night as we pour into you. And so I'm so excited, y'all! Like literally, I can already. Um, I'm so excited, and I'm just like ready to see God, God to do what He's He wants to do. You know, I'm so ready. I'm so ready. But anyways, ladies, thank you so much for joining. Um, and if you want to ever, if you, oh, let me, let me get this link one more time. I'm going to send this link. If you are just wanting, if you have not signed up for the Esther fast yet, just want you to know it is free to sign up. If you still feel that pull on your heart, we're starting February 5th through the 7th, which is next Monday through next Wednesday. That link is right there. I just dropped it at the bottom. And so you are welcome to check out that link to go ahead and join me and thousands of other ladies on the Esther fast. We do this every single year. And the last link I just dropped is to our devotional book called Finding Your Inner Esther, the Esther Fast Devotional. So if you are somebody who is wanting to go deeper during your fast and just have a book to kind of help you find your inner courage and find that inner purpose and all that, then I would encourage you to click that bottom link and get that. Today is the last day to pre-order that before it drops this weekend. And so hopefully this blesses you ladies. And thank you so much for joining me. I'm so excited to see what God does. All right, you guys. And I go, I, I feel like, I feel like I need to go home. I've been here all day. Today has been a, a day. I still got work to do, but we're going to be ready. And we're going to be prepared. And me, the way I do my fast is I get everything done. So when we fast, there's nothing I have to do. You know, like, so that's how I do. Because when I'm fasting with y'all, I'm literally not trying to be in minister mode type of deal. Or, you know, like I don't want to be sitting there creating sermons every day. And I've done that before. And it wasn't very fun. So I like to get everything out of the way and done. So when I'm on the fast with y'all, I'm just like chilling like, hey. How y'all do it? Like, you know, I'm not in the in the creation process. And I love that. So anyways, that's all. I'm gonna quit. I need to quit talking. OK, I've been on here almost an hour. I need to go home. It's almost five o'clock. So thank you, ladies, for joining me. I love you so much. And I'll see you next time. Check out those links. Last day to pre-order. Fast starts February 5th next week on Monday. Your fasting guide drops tomorrow. Make sure you're already signed up to get the free fasting guide. Also sign up and get the devotional. That devotional drops this weekend, this coming weekend as well. So you can go deeper in your walk, okay? Woo, that was a lot. Love you guys. <laughs> Bye. See you later. Bye, guys. Thank y'all.